Let me just get this all going. Yeah, so welcome to day uh, three, everybody. I'm very excited to, to be here. Um, excited to see so many of you that are on yeah, here so well. live. Uh, there's the live stream going as well over on YouTube. So if you're there too, let me just pop that in. And if you're watching on a replay, that's great. So quick recap, uh, day one was fantastic. I, I loved uh, what we covered on day one. We talked about how success isn't personal, it's structural. We talked a little bit about the superconscious. And uh, thanks, Dale. We talked about the superconscious. We talked about uh, the differences between the, the problem reality and creation. And, uh, and, and, I, and I really enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys because for me, uh, it, it just, it's just so different to the way I was brought up. Uh, it's just so different to, to how, you know, how I experienced the world for the first 30 years of my life. It was like that world was, was so hard. I was always trying to solve things. I was trying to overcome things. And, and when I realized that I've just got to be here now, and now stands for no opportunity wasted in the now, no opportunity wasted, an opportunity to find love, to find joy, to find happiness. When, when I realized that uh, nothing external changes my internal and that it wasn't about uh, if I got success, I'd feel good, or if I got failure, I'd feel bad. It was about just, just choosing how I feel consistently. Once I started to unplug and to, to realize that, uh, then success was easy because I had no attachment to it, you know, and, and, and I mean, easy, uh, like millions of dollars, uh, a quarter, hundreds of thousands of dollars coming in every single week, you know, uh, marrying an absolutely beautiful heart centered, amazing, uh, woman living, living in paradise. I live in absolute paradise. And, and it was just, it all became so easy because I wasn't attached to it. But here was the great thing is that if it left, I'd still be the same. And this is what I really got passed down to me from, you know, very super successful people is, is that they were just them and then success was here. And that, and that it was just different. Whereas what I saw everywhere else is you have to develop or improve yourself. There's something wrong with you, Chris. You know, you have to, you know, have abs. You have to have bigger muscles. You have to uh, make more money. You have to do all these external things. And so you know, we're always seeking to validate our life. And it was such an interesting way of living. So I'm glad to share that with you on day one, because uh, once I realized all that, then it was like, okay, great. So I got to be it. And uh, it was that different shift of, of stepping into being it and then letting go of everything else, rather than trying to work on the current and jump out somewhere. So very different. You know, most, most personal development says, this is you, you got to work on you. And then if you work on you enough, suddenly you'll jump over to this new reality. But it's, that's a very slow way of doing things. And it actually creates an identity of needing to fix yourself. You agree with that? So the new way is, is we, well, not the new way, the way that, that super successful people create is they, they are it. And then they let go of anything that stops them. They, they go and start doing it. And as they're doing it, things pop up and then we let go. And so this is a brand new, I guess, modality. Uh, it's not mine, you know, Colette Stryker, Dr. Gary Flint, uh, Richard Bartlett, William Whitecloud, uh, standing on the, the shoulders of some absolute giants. Uh, and then, you know, the, the billionaires, which prefer for me not to talk about who they are, who have been instructing and sharing things with me. So uh, very, very excited to be here and let you know that uh, we really do have the, the work to create whatever it is you want to create in your life. And uh, it's so, so, so exciting to share this work, say it comes through me, it's for us, it's our work. And, and everyone that's getting certified uh, in this work, I've got the book here today, the Superconscious Creator book. So we're gonna we're going straight into, into the book. So that was, you know, day one. Yesterday, we, we talked about uh, the un unpacking uh, internal conflict, which is actually a process from this book. I'll show you guys. Um, oops, let's unpack. 
childhood patterns, unpack family ecology, unpack collective parts, double bubble. Oh, it's in here somewhere. Now, now I can't find it as I go to say, oh, that one we did yesterday was in the book. Then it's not there, isn't it? Uh, so, so it comes straight from the book. So yesterday was all about understanding. There it is there. Understanding internal conflict, right? Uh, so we did that yesterday. And I think we got a lot out of it. Just, uh, you know, the first question was, what is your choice? The second is, what is the structure? Uh, you know, what do you think and feel about this? How do you define yourself in this structure? But then we really got to what is your underlying assumption yesterday? And when we understand our underlying assumption, okay, the, the reason why that was such an important thing to do was, uh, you know, if you look outside here, there's a flowing river, all right? So it's flowing. And if you're looking at it, you can, oops, oops, that didn't work. No, it's not going to look good. There you go. So it's flowing. Now it can only flow in two ways, okay? So that's that's fresh salt water out there. So it can only flow in two ways. It can either flow in or it can flow out. It can either flow in or out. It, it can't go any other way, okay? And that's because of the underlying structure that's created created there. And that's a, so that's a man-made uh, canal. The, the sea's just, uh, just down. It's about a, a, a three-minute uh, kayak that way. And, and then we're, we're, we go out into a big open uh, open section which goes out to the uh, the sea. Now, if I go out to that open section where it's open, there's not so much structure. And so the water comes in and goes in all these different directions, right? And this is an important metaphor because when it's when there's structure, which is man-made, it just goes forward and back and forward and back. And so that's what your assumptions are creating for you. Your, your assumption, your assumptions of how life is, block off your ability because you like water are an energy you can't go and get other things so we have these assumptions like here's an assumption uh it takes hard work hey victor it takes hard work to create you see that's an assumption right and, and it's a it's an assumption that we've made because we've seen people have hard work but how about this how many of us know someone that worked really hard and didn't get success yeah, I know tons of them. They work really hard and then something else comes in like a, you know, like a crazy virus or, or they get made redundant or whatever it is. And, and they don't, it did the hard work didn't equal it. And so it's interesting that when we, we, we think about our assumptions and our structures, we get to see that. Now, what, what can happen is by the way, welcome to day three. I hope you guys are all excited about what we're going to cover today um, because I did I did send you some homework and the homework was to think of places where you get triggered. We're going to talk about charged emotions, but we're also going to talk about how we get triggered. And so I want to explain this a little bit for you. So we have, we have an active experience, an active EXP, an active experience. This is your active experience, okay? So, hey, Patrick, your active experience, it's how you're experiencing the world right now, okay? It's your active experience. Now, your active experience has a conscious and unconscious aspect to it. Basically, it has thoughts and it has feelings. And so uh, th there's a lot of different science out there that says, you know, uh, our conscious brain can handle seven plus or minus two bits of information in every, every second. I've seen others that say, no, it's like 21. All, all that I want to say is I know that my unconscious brain can handle a heck of a lot more things than my conscious. And so we have this, this whole act of experience and I've split it in the middle here. Um, but uh, I, I think that it's not the, not the whole thing. Now, out of everything that you're experiencing, most of the time you're not experiencing the blood pulsating through your left ear, or you're not experiencing consciously the digestion of the food you ate this morning. Like sometimes you do though. Sometimes if the digestion doesn't go well, you start to really become conscious of what's going on. 
And so we have what, what's called a main personality. I'm just going to put MP for main personality. And your main personality is mainly in the conscious thoughts, but it's a little bit in the unconscious. Does this make sense? This is your main personality. Now, you have a main personality and it's taken up a good portion of your active experience. But sometimes your main personality changes through a charged trigger. Now, I just want to make sure that everyone's with me right now because I'm trying to make this um, as clear as possible. So you have an active experience, you have conscious thoughts, unconscious, but then you have a main personality that's here. This is what you're experiencing with right now. Now, you have a lot of dormant memories, and I'm going to put a dormant memory sitting here, dormant memory sitting here, dormant memory sitting here, outside of the active experience and some inside the active experience. Now, you have lots of dormant memories. For example, if I was to ask you a question, Notice I haven't asked you a question yet, so nothing's been triggered, okay? But if I ask that question and I say, when was the last time you rode your bicycle? Now your brain has to trigger a dormant memory and bring it into the active experience or try to, okay? So it goes into what's called a transderogational search. It looks for, well, when is that? When was that? And then tries to bring it back. And it's really interesting. I was walking uh, along with my wife, uh, walking down to the beach yesterday, and um, we're walking, and there's this couple walking towards us, and, and I didn't think anything knows, and, and they stopped me, and they said, I haven't seen you in ages, and I looked, and I go, oh, wow, and the, 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 the guy talking to me, I, I quickly went into my search, I was like, this person knows me from somewhere, and I was like, oh, uh, 15 years ago at university, this guy was in my class and he remembered me and I remembered his face. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so there I'm sitting there, I'm talking to him and he's saying, Oh, Chris, that, and I'm introducing him to my wife. And then bang, I remember his name. I remember his name, his name's Lyndon. And, and I remember his last name. And, it, and it would, but you, if you guys ever experienced that moment, what's this person's name? I know, I know them. I've seen their face and you're in there pulling for dormant memory. So this happened yesterday to me while I was walking. And, and so what's happened is I'm out there trying to find this memory, the memory's there, and I can trigger it into the active experience, and then there it is, it's ready for me. I can trigger it into the active experience, okay? Now, this is really important because sometimes you can have dormant memories that your main personality has no idea about, okay? And these memories can actually form their own identity. Okay, so I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to call them trauma identities. So I'm going to put a, a T and, and an I here for a trauma identity. I'm going to put T and an I here for trauma identity. So let's say um, when you were very, very, very small, maybe you were one years old over here. Maybe you're one years old. You've seen your parents get real freaked out in the 1987 uh, stock market crash or the, the, the 1970s um, or a petrol oil shortage, right? Or maybe you see when you're one years old, you've seen your dad lose his job and fight about money, or maybe dad went to the Vietnam War or went to World War II and they had to go and, and, uh, and it, was very, it was very traumatic. And so you didn't know how to deal with it. So what you did is you created this traumatic identity over here and your main personality is not connected. Your main personality is not connected. Maybe you were ridiculed at a young age, you know, maybe you're a boy and at a young age, you, um, <coughs> you started playing with dolls and you got ridiculed for that. And you, you know, you, you coded up something or maybe you wanted to be a singer. That, and so as a kid, you, you sung or you spoke out and, and everyone laughed and you got embarrassed, but it didn't, they weren't laughing at you. You just, you just couldn't sing well then. And then now the main personality wants to go and become a speaker. And as it wants to go and become a speaker, all of a sudden this traumatic identity gets triggered and pulled in or this upset part of you 
gets pulled into the active experience and it's called a takeover, okay? And so if you don't understand sometimes why, you know, you're not able to hold on to money or you sabotage relationships or you can just, who, who can do that, by the way? Who can just sometimes get triggered, like bang, and you're in a completely different identity all of a sudden. Um, uh, for me, I just get triggered around money. Like if I saw it go down, boom, I could create a hole and I would turn, and I would get so focused, shut everyone, and I would be a different person. And it made me start to realize, well, who is that? So that is just a different aspect or an identity of you that's sitting there, okay? And it, your main personality, okay, this main personality here, this part, the main personality has amnesia with these other trauma identities. They don't know each other. And they, the trauma identity is being created or it's there um, to, to hold and to look after a certain set of information. But when that set of information is needed, what it does, instead of just bringing the information into the main personality, it brings all the pain with it. Does this make sense? So instead of just being able to deal with the information that there's not much money, instead, now, bang, you've got all this trauma sitting there as well. Well, where's, where's, is, the, is the trauma needed? No, the trauma is not needed. But what most of us do is because we're not working super consciously is we just keep working on the main personality. And what's interesting is your main personality is normally quite fine with everything that you're doing, right? Your main personality wants to make more money. Your main personality feels good. You may, it's normally, the main personality is quite fine. I feel people that go, yeah, Chris, I'm, I've done heaps of self-development, blah, 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 blah. Oh my, like, wow, cool, great, I love that. Um, yeah, but I can't make money. What? What do you mean you can't make money? Yeah, yeah, I've never been able to hold on to money or, or, or you know, I see them, they're overweight or this or that. And I think, well, 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 how have you done all the work? And for a while, I thought they were just lying. Like I thought they were lying or just not like playing full out in the work. I thought, well, you got, you're just not doing the work. And, and uh, you know, 10 years ago, the younger me would just be like, you're not doing the work. It's obvious. Look, and then I learned uh, after repetition, seeing it again and again and again. And, you know, I, I've conducted seminars in 13 countries now. Uh, over 140,000 people have attended those. So, so you start to see uh, patterns. And what I realized is that a lot of times uh, we haven't actually found a way to go and actually work on all these other uh, identities that keep on coming in and, and spoiling the, the party, so to speak. Does this make sense with everybody? And th this is what we do, you know, one of the big things we do in the, in the Superconscious Creator Workshop. You know, uh, we spend a lot of time, you know, bringing everything together so that it, it can all be one. So, look, it, it's really interesting. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to, to go over uh, before we, we jump into it. Are you guys enjoying this so far? Give me some feedback in the chat box uh, if, you are, if you are. Cool. I'll just grab a quick, a quick drink here. Cool. So premise number one, I'm going to use the same piece of paper. Premise number one, focus creates reality. Your focus creates reality. However, uh, your focus is not just your main personality's focus, okay? It's the whole active experience, which can include dormant memories and traumatic identities. We think our focus is just what our brain is focusing on, okay? But our focus is all of the feelings that we're feeling and it's all the other things outside the main personality, okay? And by the way, we I didn't draw any, but you can have inside your conscious thoughts, you can have a traumatic identity sitting in your conscious thoughts and you can know about it. 
every you you know your main personality wants to this is when you have a, a real conflict when you have this it's actually in the conscious side because then you know about it this is when people go you know i want to be i want to be a speaker but then this this part of them says you know i hate rejection right and they know it and there's this fight bang 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 so your focus creates reality. If you have this amazing conflict here, your reality is going to be stuck. So your focus creates reality, but focus isn't just what you're thinking. In fact, a lot of people, when they try to change their focus, they'll do something like affirmations and their affirmations are something like this. You know, I always have enough money. I love money. Money loves me. I love it. I always have enough. Money is everywhere. Right? This is one of their affirmations. Yet in the back of their mind, they know they don't, that's not reality. So what, what it is, is it's their conscious brain, but where's their real focus? Their real focus is that they don't have it. That's in fact why they're doing that. I've never, ever, ever met uh, or experienced someone with really high levels of wealth, a um, hundred million dollars or more. I've never experienced, and I've met a lot of them, been to a lot of their houses. I've never walked into their, uh, their kitchen uh, or been in their office and seen crazy affirmations everywhere, you know, because we don't affirm, we don't need to affirm things we already have. And so those doing those, it actually stops them more because what they really are, their real focus is that they don't have it, that they don't have it. So number one, focus uh, creates reality. The second thing is there's three different aspects of consciousness. Okay, there's the super conscious, there's the self conscious, and then there's the unconscious. All of these have memories and they tell us how it is. When we know how it is, that creates our uh, focus. So our focus is directly impacted through our super conscious, self conscious, and unconscious memories which then our focus creates reality. And so what we have to understand is we need to come into these different aspects of consciousness. If our reality, if our reality isn't the way we want it, it's because of our focus. And our focus is because of our three different aspects of memory. So we can work our way back and we can understand that we need to shift the structure so that water can flow in a different direction. For example, think about, you know, I showed you the, the canal outside if, if that's the only structure, but what they want is over here, water can't just flow there. We need to change the underlying uh, structure. It doesn't matter how much we get excited, how much motivation we put in that, car, that water, it can only flow back and forth. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter how much water I put in there. It doesn't matter how little I sleep. It doesn't matter how many times I get up and do meditations for an hour and a half. It doesn't matter. If the structure is still saying you've got to work hard to make money or money is bad, if that's still the structure, it doesn't matter all the things that you do. It doesn't matter how many you know amazing vitamins you put in that water. It doesn't matter how healthy the water is. It just simply can't go where you want it to go. And that structure is created back here because it tells us how it is. It's what we started to, to go through yesterday. And so the, the truth is this, that these, that's premise number one. Premise number two, premise number three is you created everything. I'll just write it all. You created it all. You created it all. And uh, that's why it's so exciting. And people go, no, I didn't. You told me on the first session, Chris, that there's seven generations of family patterns encoding in my DNA. I didn't create it. Well, you did. You did. You might not have uh, created getting, getting it, but you have created keeping it. You have created using it as your mode of operating on this planet. You have chosen to keep it. You might say, I didn't choose, Chris. I didn't choose. And what you're really saying is, my self-conscious main personality didn't choose it. That's what you're really saying. That's what you're saying. You're saying to me, Chris, I didn't choose. And what I hear is 
my self-conscious aspect didn't choose. However, your unconscious and super conscious aspects of yourself chose it. Just because your thinking brain didn't choose it, you doesn't mean you didn't choose it. And, and that's very interesting because we sometimes feel like we're not that, but it just has a different goal in life. It's still you though. When we tap into the super conscious, it allows us to actually go into those parts of us that are non-thinking, that are non-conscious, and to create new choices, create new structure, so that you can have a, a better flow to what you want in life. Who's following this? I know I just jumped straight into uh, jumped straight into some some big stuff from our super conscious creator workshop. Um, hey, who's who's coming to this? Who's coming to this? We're actually doing it as a digital event um, next week. It's a uh, it's a big deal. Can't wait to see you there, Mark and Cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. So. Thanks, Martin. Martin says it's so worth it. Uh, he's uh, he's already been. I think a better question, Mark, is which nights shouldn't we? And I think the answer is uh, none. <laughs> I think that's the truth. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm excited to see you guys all there. So let's get into talking about the uh, and doing the charged uh, charged emotions. So did everyone uh, can everyone think of a charged emotion or did everybody uh, do their homework from yesterday about charged emotions? So um, those of you in the coaching group. Uh, we're doing neutralized charge action. So we have a full certification on, on all of this work. And, uh, and a lot of people have this book. So if you don't have the book, it's just because you're not in the program and that's okay. I'm just here giving you guys this for free. It's a huge gift, but I'm still giving you the stuff that, that um, you know, the best stuff. So, so our result is, uh, yeah, I know, Mark, you have to just get a delivery, mate. <laughs> um, okay, so our end result when we want to neutralize charged actions is to be able to take the correct action, okay? So we, we first want to ask ourselves, well, well what, is the, what is the charge? Where does it come from, okay? So what is the charge? When is something you get charged about? And by charged, what I mean is, is the emotion you feel is greater than what is necessary. So, you know, your kid asks the same question five times and you lose it. Your husband or wife um, still hasn't listened to you and, and leaves, you know, dirty clothes sitting there or doesn't do that and you lose it. You look at your bank account and instead of, going, wow, I don't have any money, you get completely panicked, right? Instead of simply going, okay, this is, this is interesting. This isn't, this isn't what I want. I need, to, I need to be able to keep my head. So I want you all right now, question um, is to, to get into this with me. So have you ever been really mad at someone um, because you thought that they said something about you or has someone been really mad at you because you thought that they said something or that you said something, and then it, they turned out that they got the wrong information? Has that ever happened? And do you remember the relief? You know, once you're like, oh, I'm so glad that that's not what you did, you know, or you thought something else. I remember this happened to me one time. Everyone was being so secretive. And I thought, like, I was like, oh, what the heck's going on? And they, so no one was telling me what was happening. And, and it uh, turns out that that organized a surprise birthday party for me. 
And uh, there I was, I was getting all annoyed because I'm like, why aren't they talking to me? What are they talking about? I would interrupt conversations. What are you guys talking about? And they'd say nothing, nothing, nothing. And I created this whole story that, you know, uh, they were all doing something, they were out to get me, you know, all of these things. And then I get the surprise birthday party and I feel like such a dickhead. You know, I feel so stupid because there I was having all these ideas about what's going on, why aren't they doing work? And, you know, some of them are my staff. And then there I am, you know, looking stupid after having this whole story. So has that ever happened to you? Or, or anything like that happened to you where you got the wrong information, okay? And so this is what I mean by, uh, by when a charged action takes over, okay? Uh, it's not, at, you know, it's not looking at the accurate information. And in these sort of times, we don't need the extra charge. We need cool heads, we need focused people. We don't need people getting taken off by all these emotions and ruining relationships. Does that make sense? We don't want to ruin relationships. See, there can be a conflict, a disagreement, but if you then start throwing knives and start getting attacking verbally and everything else, turns into something that creates a bigger problem rather than being able to look at the information. This is true for yourself, it's true for your relationships, it's true where we are. And so the emotional response is not true. And I want everyone to hear this. Emotions are just a communication structure to tell us information based on past experience. It's just there to give us information on what happened in the past. That's all it is, okay? And so just because in the past this happened and it was really painful doesn't put any, any reason why that will happen again. We take the emotion because anything painful, we want to avoid. So what our, uh, our unconscious system does is it's going to give us a jolt of emotion so that we avoid circumstances, people, information that have created pain in the past. Okay. And so it's just information. It's just a way that we communicate information. Now, this memory of this information it can be stored in your unconscious, but it can be passed down from multiple generations. And I've talked about this up until now a little bit, but when I worked with someone with, with people, in fact, I'll tell you a story, this person won't mind. Uh, I worked with a client recently and they always, always, always would find a way as soon as they made money to lose it. As soon as they had a relationship, they would move really fast into love. As soon as the other person was in love with them, they would be they would be in in going for it, going for it. As soon as the other person reciprocated, they fell out of love like instantly. And so it was really interesting that have this they had this whole theme in their life of getting it. As soon as they got it, they would lose it. And so when we went into their superconscious, and I was working with them. We, we got this huge, huge image and it had to do with uh, World War II and the whole family um, being taken away, money, everything. And uh, this person actually said, no, no, that's, that's not my history. Oh, okay, cool. That's what I got. Let's recode it. So we, we recode it, right? And we, we do work for about a year together and, and their life changes dramatically. They're able to have more money, more fun, their relationships stick. And they reconnect with a, a family member and the family member starts saying, well, you know, it's so great how grandma has done, you know, with this new family, even though she lost all of her, all of her family in World War II. And so what happened was, Grandma had a fa a, another family, and then that family was taken. They, as soon as they met, that was taken. Somehow, uh, grandma was able to, to hide or be out of it. That family was left. Grandma had the trauma, remarried, new family line, but the trauma was still there in grandma. And that was why I get chills. I get chills telling you this because... The person didn't know, I didn't know, 
but that's just what the superconscious showed us was there. And so sometimes when I'm doing work with you, we do work on this. We don't even know, but we just do it, whatever, whatever's there. And it was, it was phenomenal. And so my point is, by the way, who thinks that's pretty, pretty wild, eh? Yeah, it's wild. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand that um, a charged emotion is a charged emotion. We don't need to to try to figure out where it came from. All right, it's pointless. It's pointless. We'll ask the superconscious to shift it and recode it. That's it. But just know that you you got to charge on something, and it's unnecessary. Right? You don't need to be upset about things. It doesn't doesn't make it a doesn't make any difference to stamp your feet, get upset about it. It doesn't change it. It's there. It's 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 what's happening. It's a situation. They're still not putting the the towel away. They they are they're not doing their homework. You don't have the money that they're creating. It, it's there, and it's not about letting the charge take you. So we just want to notice it. So here's the process. Okay. So step one. Notice you have a charge on something. So can everyone, let's do this. You all did this homework. Um, yeah, right on, Grace. Grace has done enough therapy. We don't need to go back and revisit it. We're just going to step into our new reality. Let go. So number one is notice you have a charge on something. Notice something, you get an extra charge. So can everyone type in a... Um, yeah, Jennifer has written in, uh, I'm looking for the, the why. You know, we don't, we don't need to try to, to go for the why. Um, I find that it, that can become a lifelong journey uh, of trying to find out why this is here. And it's just, it, it's, it's very pointless if that's what you have to do every time, you know, other than being a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting, uh, it's really, it's really slow. So instead of looking, we just go, well, that's what's here. We just notice what's here. So can everyone give me a number one when you've done number one? Just, I want you to notice you have a charge on something. Um, notice something creates a, and a charge means uh, our extra, extra emotion than what's warranted. What do you have a charge on? Notice you have a charge on something. Cool. All right. So Carol, I mean, uh, you know, you might disagree, but it doesn't need to send you through the roof and knock you out of your day. Right. So let's notice you have a charge on something. Cool. Um, okay. Question number two is I want you to Oops, oh, I'm sorry, I, that, that question, I did actually write that question in here, but it just went to, um, I didn't send it to everyone. So one, notice you have a charge or something. Number two, um, notice what you're feeling. Number two is notice what you're feeling. We're gonna do the recode on this. We're not just gonna do questions like yesterday. Notice what you're feeling. And so, when you notice what you feel about it, I feel enraged. I feel, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to write the word in or write the word down. I want you to get the wording. The wording is very important. Notice what you're feeling. Patrick's already, already one step ahead. Angry, disrespected. Okay. And, and as you're noticing um, what you're what you're feeling, ask ask yourself, well, well, what's the message behind that? And you know, if you feel like typing it in, you can, or just give me a number two when you've done done number two. And I just need a few people to be um, putting the two in and things like that. It's not all hundred of you, um, just so I can, there we go. Just so I can keep the right pace. Okay, so the third question before the recode 
notice what you want to do to resolve your pain. Uh, here's number two is notice what you're feeling. Number one is notice you have a charge. Number two is notice what you're feeling. Number three is notice what you want to do to resolve the pain. Oops, spelt notice wrong. Okay, and then, then we're going to get the number. Notice what you want to do to resolve the pain. I want to trust everything will be okay. So what do you do? Notice what you do. Do you do self-talk? Do you do you do it? Do you talk yourself up? Procrastinate. Not feel it at all. Angela says, um, I don't feel it at all. I don't. And so when they say pain, um, you, you could change the word to notice um, what you want to do to resolve the emotion. Maybe that helps, Angela. Yeah, maybe I didn't word the question the best. Yeah, notice what you want to do. Ignore it, turn it off. Yeah, hide. So let me ask you, um, scream and run away, isolate. So let's let's do the recode now. So number four is um, is let's let's recode this charge. Okay. So out of ten, um, one between one and ten, um, uh, how much do you think you have a charge on this? So ten is like uh, this is ten out of ten charge. Zero is is. Uh, no charge, which makes no sense. All right, cool. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the super conscious recode. If you haven't taken a intro session with me um, and, and done a recode before, I'm, I'm not going to explain the basics of how this works. So you need to, to either... Um, Pause right now, go go to day one and do the intro session uh, and then come back to this or to just trust and, and go with it. But I'm not going to be redoing the intro, okay? Just because um, it's boring for me to have to do the, to, to explain it every single time. So I've already explained it all on, on day one. It takes half an hour to explain it. Okay, so... Uh, so everyone who's doing the recode with me now to bring this charge action down, uh, just just remember that it's it's completely you, completely safe. I'm going to connect to your super conscious. Uh, you give me permission as I connect to that aspect of you. I'm going to give gentle commands to your super conscious, and this is going to to create a uh, create a change for you to experience now. So uh, we want to just ask ourselves, do all aspects of me, do all identities, would they prefer to have more satisfaction and less pain? And the answer is normally yes. We want to have more satisfaction, less pain. And so we want to consider that we can keep all the learnings, but we don't need the emotion. We can keep the learnings, the emotions. So for example, if someone has abused us in the past, the learning is who to avoid. The emotion of, of being abused, the scared, all of that, that just knocks us out of feeling good. Okay, so it's not needed anymore. We can get the learning, we can have it and we can integrate it so we can use the understandings and knowledge and the learnings in the future, but we don't need this, this emotion to, to knock us out. In fact, the emotion actually causes more pain and less satisfaction because now, instead of just having a thing that creates charge, now our day gets ruined. For example, someone, someone said here that um, a, a politician causes them, you know, they, they, every time they listen to this politician, it freaks them out. And then that ruins their day. You know, and they, they get upset, they get annoyed, rather than taking the information that they need to take or, or whatever. So... So it's it's not about letting the emotion rule your life. So let's do the uh, let's do the recode, hey.
let's do the recode so so close your eyes and give me permission to connect to your super conscious uh and to create change my eyes will be closed for this so i'm not going to be able to see the chat box so just um just close your eyes right now. Uh, and I just want to connect to the super conscious of everyone on this call and everyone watching the replay. I'm going to talk to your super conscious uh, like it's a like it's a person. It's been with you your whole life. It's a part of you. So super conscious, do I have permission? Great, thank you. Just make sure you got your eyes closed and in your heart and your mind, I give Chris Duncan permission to connect to my super conscious to create more satisfaction, less pain. Just give that permission. All right, cool, got it, thank you. Super conscious, do you see this charge? Can you see the original event in this timeline or passed down through family history can you treat it please treat all the emotion but keep all the learnings understandings and knowledge do a massive change history and everything is needed thank you And just breathe. Superconscious, please treat all body systems, lungs, heart, throat, shoulders, back, lower back, all chakras. Superconscious, can you treat the muscle memory and coding in all body systems related to this charge? Thank you. Superconscious, please treat all agreements and vows with ourself. I will never let this happen again. And I will, I will, I will. Superconscious, go back in time and space and all history of this family line and notice all the emotional vows that are decreasing satisfaction in the current reality and increasing pain. Please go to each of them individually in the perfect way, in the perfect order and treat for the highest good. Thank you. Please bring all the information and knowledge with you so the main personality can use it as needed. Superconscious, do you see this charge? 
Can you notice the higher way to deal with this? Please replace all memories, actions, and coded behavior with the higher way to deal with this. Do a massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. Superconscious, please treat family entanglements and rules that are causing more pain and less satisfaction. Do a massive change history and everything. And if there's anything left over between where you are now and zero, no charge, neutral. Please treat it down to zero. That's it. Just like an iceberg, just melt it down. That's it. That's it, just melt it down. Superconscious, please ground all the memories we've touched today and please remain, please replace all memories with focus, self love, and the higher way to deal with this. Please ground them into the matrix of the universe. All memories, including tandem memories, future memories, all aspects of consciousness, shadow memories, identities, emotions. And take three big breaths just to ground this back down into your reality, all chakras. Notice in the future how centered you feel. And just choose, choose to be a submarine. Choose to be a ship that doesn't let any water in. See others' actions and emotions are like the ocean and you're a boat, you're a submarine. Only what you let in can sink you. Superconscious, do you understand the metaphor? Please strengthen your ship. Please strengthen the walls. Please make them unpenetrable. Please ground that into your reality. Down through your feet into the ground. All right, when you feel when you feel complete, now you can uh, can open your eyes and come back. Let me know when you're back. Getting lots of wows, 
the vow was a big release. So fill me in, because I don't know what's happened over there. Uh, what happened? What's your number now? What was it before on this charge? And how does it feel now? Buzzing, amazing, absolutely amazing. Feel much better, feel relief. Felt dealt with some heavy stuff. Rather not do therapy, I agree. I'm so relaxed, no weight in stomach. And now a two, eight to three, eight to two, seven to two, down to a one or less. Cat six to one, Mark six to one point five, Marie nine to two, Eduardo eight to two, Patty nine to two, Christine eight to two, hey Dom ten to one, Victor nine and a half to five, Dean down to zero. You can hear that nine to one tingling with relaxation. Breathe easier, not sure of number, but that's all right. That's all right. Nine to three, 10 to two, seven to two, three, question mark. Yeah. Oh, hey, two, eight to zero. Hey guys, I've got Tusi on here, one of my team members. It's good to see you on uh, YouTube, Tusi, on a Sunday. Love you. So good. Wonder if we have Alexia or others on. Hey, Tusi. Um, wow. I have been a 10 for years. I feel like it's gone a zero. Wow, Bob, that's a big shift. Euphema, 10 to five. Good, Brad, 10 to three. Best recode ever. Wow, thanks. Thanks, well done. Well done. Cool. Hey, two, is everyone saying hi on Zoom to you? Dean says hi, Patrick says hi, Kat says hi. Good stuff. Everyone loves you too, see? Um, <laughs> you're standing hard. <laughs> I totally get it now, too. Martin says hi, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, okay, so that, that was cool. So the, the next question, um, so you can see, you can see here, well, let me just make sure I can see. Um, you see, we did number four, recode and ask, um, what is it for a higher way to deal with this? So now we're up to number five. And number five says, from this perspective, what is the true response? Okay, so number five, five, from this perspective. What is the true response? So that's the next question, okay? And th this is how you crying, then relieved, nine to four, feel really good, life-changing. Well done, Stefan, awesome. Stefa, oh, it's Steph, hey, Steph. It always, your YouTube name always, um, always gets me. I know who it is though. Cool. So from this perspective you're in right now, what is the true response? Cool. From this perspective, what is the true response? Nice. And then the last step is act on truth. Act on truth. So this is a very powerful process, the neutralizing charged actions. Uh, my coaches, certified coaches, can do this work with you. So if there's um, some coaches on here and you you know you want to do this one on one with someone, uh, they can help you. They can help you go through this work. Uh, if you want to be in our masterclass or come join us on the two or four days, we can help you go through it. But I think um, there was a really 
a really, really, really good uh, intro to neutralizing feel lighter. Nice. So guys, we really do have the most revolutionary process and you're in control now. So here are the steps and then we'll finish off today. Tomorrow, we're going to go into family recode. So tomorrow, we're going to look at your family patterns and family emotions. Tomorrow is going to be massive. So those of you who are enjoying this, please do me one favor and share this out. Please get subscribed to YouTube so you don't miss any. Same time tomorrow. Please share this out. Please tell people about this work and, and, and let them know that we're doing some really big stuff here. And it's uh, there's nothing else like it. So these were the steps to neutralize the charge action. Number one, notice you have a charge on something. Number two, notice what you're feeling. Number three, notice what you want to do to resolve the pain. Number four, recode and ask, what is the higher way to deal with this? After you do the recode, number five, from this new perspective, what is the true response? And then number six, act on truth. And those are the six steps. Those are the six steps. You can, uh, Eduardo says, can I try this and, and clear another memory? Absolutely. So this is recorded. It's on YouTube for this week. Okay. This week only it's free. All right. Uh, just so everyone knows it's free for this week. Jump in, take action, be a part of it. Uh, you know, this is normally what we do in our paid uh, coaching. So make sure to tell all your friends, your team members, your colleagues, get as many people on these as possible. Why, why they can, the world needs it right now. And, uh, and I want to be part of leading as many people to the truth um, to help them to understand how to use the super conscious. Uh, so it's a very, very, very important new work that is here. We get to stand on the shoulders of Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza and Lynn McTaggart and the Emotion Code and Site K and NLP and EDMR and EFT and uh, all the different healing modalities and uh, Hopoono and we, Reiki and we get to go, you know what? They've all set the stage for us now to go, you know what? We can just connect to this part of us that created it all and we can recode it in the perfect way. So very excited to be sharing this new work with all of you. Those of you getting certified, I hope that you're, uh, you're watching and modeling, watching and modeling, watching and modeling. Where's, where's Kat and Martin and everyone else? Uh, Carol was here. I hope you're watching and modeling and watching and modeling. And Steph, I've seen Steph on here. Um, I hope so. There's Carol. She's on Zoom now as well. Uh, we've got some amazing, amazing coaches getting certified in this work, guys. So there's heaps of people that you can work with. Heaps of people. There's Dean. There's heaps of uh, coaches that you can get this work. I'm very lucky just to be the one bringing it through uh, and sharing it all with you. So have an absolutely amazing 24 hours. It's 11.11 here, which is a good time to finish and say, I absolutely love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow please share out my YouTube channel. Um, that is the only way that you can, uh, you can help at the moment. So please do that. See you tomorrow, same time, same place, where we're going to look at family entanglements and a big family recode. So it's very, very, very exciting. Thanks, guys. Bye for now. See you there.